This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armies Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, Jonathan's going to be taking a look at some more firearms from Cyberpunk 2077, some of which really made him laugh. Selected mode, Stone Cold Killer. Happy slaughtering. <laughs> What's that? Wow. I don't know what to say about that. I kind of like it. <laughs> If there are any other games, guns, and mechanics you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe as well, as we've got tons of content just like this on the channel, including Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming. Right, let's take a look at the guns of Cyberpunk 2077. Well, I expected Wacky from Cyberpunk, and I'm not disappointed in that respect. My first impression is of a sci-fi Desert Eagle type thing, and we can see explosions taking place in the breach. Yeah, there's, there's fire in the chamber. Now, if you see fire from the chamber of your conventional firearm, something's gone horribly wrong. So I think these must be rocket projectiles, or rocket-assisted, or something. We've also got a, a really bizarre under-barrel type attachment. We do see a periodic attempts to attach accessories other than lights and lasers to pistol rails, like bayonets, for example. Anyway, this one is a flamethrower of some kind. A tiny flamethrower, which I think might be the only pistol accessory I've never seen attempted in real life. The sights on this thing are really conventional. We've got uh, Glock-style white trough at the back and a white dot on the front. Very 20th century iron sights on this high-tech, albeit kind of parallel universe from what I understand, weapon. It does look quite cool. It's got a, a magazine in front of the pistol grip rather than in it. I guess the advantage there is these, these projectiles look very long, so you wouldn't fit those in the grip of the weapon, so you need a magazine, I don't know, either hanging off the back of the pistol, which would be, like, wouldn't be great, or where it is. Makes the whole weapon longer than it needs to be. You have to put the barrel in front of the magazine, the magazine in front of the pistol grip, it all makes for a very long gun. Come on, move it! Quite an interesting looking gun. I'm getting some Steyr AUG vibes from it. A lot of sort of detail, not nice detail on it. I'm not sure all of it's tremendously functional, but then, hey, I don't know how this thing works. Reciprocating cocking handles, which are generally frowned upon at the moment, and probably always will be, albeit they are up and out of the way of the shooter, so it wouldn't actually be a problem. The magazine release is a bit weird. It looks like, I'm pretty sure, it's almost like an electronic system. You press the button on the front edge of the magazine well and then pull the magazine out. Not really very efficient. When we already have magazines that drop free when you press a mechanical button, this would be a, a sort of backwards step. What do you think I'm doing? Okay, bit of um, detail that, that, that works here. We've got the classic computer game movie quad muzzle flash thing going on, uh, which is, you know, always looks nice, doesn't always make a huge amount of sense. Here though, the muzzle device does appear to have the ports in it that match where that muzzle flare is, is emanating from. So whilst you don't want a firearm that produces ludicrous muzzle flash that is distracting slash blinding in, in low light conditions slash gives you away to the enemy, at least this m makes some sort of mechanical sense. So I'm going to dub this the Angry Bees gun, because uh, it's it's essentially a really sci-fied up Mad Max shotgun, but the, the sort of 9 volt battery looking ammunition units, <laughs> feed things, whatever they are, cartridges I suppose, are multiple round and they're all f they're firing a sort of swarm of shots that seem to fly almost at random. So there's clearly some technology going on here that I'm not privy to. We had a, a really a nice demonstration of this thing's capabilities there where the 
the player character is behind cover and backs off around it and shoots at whatever your eye brain HUD has previously locked onto and the whole swarm of shot go round the corner like cartoon bullets from a Warner Brothers cartoon and kill the guy. I, I'm, I definitely applaud things that not only look different and fun and cool but actually have different functionality you know we, we can all do a space assault rifle or a space shotgun but in terms of functionality and gameplay you want it to do something different oh gentle gentle cylinder stroke there it's a very cool looking revolver it is reminiscent of well the front end is uh, Kiapa Rhino the overall appearance though is a bit more Mateba auto revolver now normally, um, I can't show you the classical Mateva that everyone knows that looks really cool and presumably inspired the Kiapa as well, because we haven't got one. However, the Mateva we've got is actually quite a bit more reminiscent of the one in Cyberpunk, because it has the cylinder in front of the trigger. Uh, it's not a perfect match by any means, but it, it yeah, really has a... I mean, this, this, this thing looks Cyberpunk on its own, I think. Weird kind of polymer pistol grip on the back of the of the game gun. Obviously not on this in this case. This is a target revolver, as you can see. So this model, less familiar perhaps to, to, to most people, is the MTR6. This is a 38 Special. It has a catch here for the cylinder. Pull down and then push out the cylinder, and it works pretty much by default with its own proprietary form of clip. And you. Drop that in. These are inert rounds, by the way. Swing the cylinder up into place, and that's that's your loading mechanism. So e even the loading of this feels quite quite cyberpunk, and it's vaguely reminiscent of what I'm seeing here, which is the only gun I think that we have that really looks anything like what's in cyberpunk. <laughs> A much more conventional looking pistol here. This is something that we could make now. In fact, someone did. It was called the Hudson H9. And this has, this is by no means a copy of that, but it, it, I would hazard a guess that the designer of this referenced the Hudson H9. There's a, there's a circular feature on the side of this, below the slide, above the trigger guard, that's very reminiscent of what's on the H9, the general configuration of it. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. There's not much I would rule out for near future when it comes down to handguns, except that I would expect to see a red dot sight on each and every one of them from about let's 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 be cautious and say 20 years i would expect all full size pistols at least <laughs> to have some sort of a red dot sight on them no more iron sights well maybe not no more iron sights but yeah red dot is the future Now, having, having gone on about red dot, uh, lack of red dot sights on this pistol, knowing full well that there would be some, we've got one, and it's an interesting one as well. It looks to be a miniature... Well, it's, it's a reflex sight projected from a base, which is what I keep anticipating the future does hold for us, is some sort of low-profile base that emits a little holographic reticle. So there's nothing to get hit. In terms of field of view, you would you would be looking a little bit further over the top of your pistol, and you have unlimited field of view because there's no framing disturbing your uh, blocking your view. If you think about uh, red dot sights, uh, like sitting in the car, you know, driving a car with pillars and a roof and a dashboard. Well, ideally for vis full visibility, you wouldn't have any pillars or roof. Um, <laughs> but we need that for safety reasons. With a pistol or, or any firearm, you need the framing to protect the sensitive bits of glass. In future, we probably won't need that, and that's kind of what we're seeing. This one is what they, what they call down south, I believe, a bit leery, very brightly coloured, and the, the sort of receiver architecture is a bit bonkers. We've got a very robust looking overarching rail that, well, I suppose it would work a bit like a carrying handle, but has, has the air of a girder about it. This is something that might we might see more of. We're already starting to see remote controls, as it were, on, on firearms. I suppose starting with the bullpup trigger, where there's a, a bar connecting the trigger to the sear, and then rifles like the X95, where the magazine release is remotely connected, albeit mechanically, to the magazine release at the back of the weapon. If battery and wireless technology were to get sufficiently 
reliable, there's no reason why your controls couldn't be wherever you want them to be. And with some sort of tactile feedback, because you know a touchscreen style affair wouldn't really work. But the point is, we might just about see electronic controls. Uh, maybe you know electronic ignition. We've had that experimented with with small arms, and it's routinely used in artillery. And then our controls could be almost anywhere. You know, servo motors inside the gun. You press a button, the thing cocks itself. Maybe. I think we're a long way off that, though. That is deeply ugly. That's got to be, I don't know, it's like a, it's a sort of clamshell polymer receiver with all sorts of angles and curves that don't belong. Yeah, it looks like someone's left a P90 in the sun for too long. Struggling to make sense of, of it. Let's let's watch some more. Local authorities are under <laughs> I believe I could see the words budget arms on this thing, which actually rings pretty true looking at it. That general configuration is bizarre. There's a the magazine is sitting at a, a really unhappy angle in terms of angle of presentation to actually feed rounds into the chamber. And it does appear to be a conventional, well, I don't know how it's operated, but a conventional cartridge firearm, at least. And there's something going on at the back there that almost seems to be the, like the P90's weird front curved grip, only it's the rear grip. I haven't had a good view of it. But it has a sort of high-tech looking uh, scope on it with a lot of tiny text for you to read, which is helpful in the middle of a firefight. I can't work out what most of the tiny text says, but um, we have a round counter. Makes a certain amount of sense. It's not too obtrusive, handy to have that information. What's less handy when your guns just run out of ammunition is the word reloading in block capitals, making it harder to see the person that might be shooting at you when you've literally just run out of ammunition. That seems like a, a poor move. I don't know, I, I, think, this, I think this thing is uh, growing on me slightly as something that makes sense in this world as the cheapest possible automatic weapon you can get your hands on. It's called Budget Arms. Uh, it looks cheaply made. I, I assume it's taking advantage of current era manufacturing techniques there doesn't look to be a way to replace the optical sight it's just it's integral intriguingly it does take a, a suppressor I'd almost expect any futuristic firearm to accept a suppressor but if this thing is as cheap as it appears to be I, I'm kind of surprised that it does A bullpup pistol. Actual bullpup pistols are, from memory, non-existent. This is genuinely a bullpup in that it has that breech, that firing mechanism, well behind not only the trigger but the pistol grip as well, making it very compact indeed. Also a bit unwieldy looking at this thing though. It's got a lot of mass at the back and off to one side as well because of this unusual reloading system. But I give, I give the designers uh, some credit here for a very interesting looking gun and a new feed system. How plausible it would be, probably not very, but it does look good. They're almost like miniature Lewis gun <laughs> pans or something. You slap them in the side and then there's, there's a very a very cool looking reload where the character swipes out the empty magazine, drum, whatever, cylinder really, out of the out of the gun and then pushes the fresh one home. All looks great. I don't really quite get how it fires. If these are conventional rounds, they're coming in at a ridiculous angle. Clearly don't feed, they fire from within the cylinder. There's, there are flashes of electrical blue energy going on here. And what's flying out of the side of the gun are not cartridge cases in the conventional sense. They look almost like machine gun link. So I don't know what those are or how those would fly out of the gun. Maybe something is getting chambered from this. Maybe it's not a cylinder, maybe it's a drum. I quite like things that I can't figure out when they look like they might work. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, if you think too hard about it, it probably won't work. This I give the, I give the sort of sci-fi pass. Now the sights on this thing really ought to be the sights on everything in this game because they're nice and low profile. Um, they look like they can be used as iron sights in a pinch because there, there is a notch in the center of that rear base, but by default, the rear sight projects an aiming reticle. 
and that's all you would need. The only reason we don't have this now is that battery technology isn't good enough. Well, and also I suppose em emitted optics would be subject to ambient light conditions that would make them very hard to see. So we, we are a way off from that, to be fair. But uh, it's what I like to see in a science fiction game. Selected mode, stone cold killer. Happy slaughtering. <laughs> I paused there. <laughs> wow. I don't know what to say about that. I kind of like it. <laughs> It, it seems like something you'd get in a Fifth Element sequel. C yeah, cr crossed with um, something like uh, Mr. D DNA from Jurassic Park, which is based on old, you know, 40s, 50s training films and public information films with animated characters in them, of course. It's a talking bullet that wears shades. Uh, apart from Skippy himself, <laughs> the gun looks kind of understandably normal. It's sort of a, a low-profile self-loading pistol. I assume it uses conventional-ish ammunition, but it's got some kind of smart targeting capability that I imagine I'm about to see the results of. Error. Premature discharge. I'm sorry. This never happens. <laughs> Pause. Right, I should learn to uh, watch the whole thing before commenting because this is not at all conventional. Doesn't have a slide, doesn't have a bolt, doesn't seem to eject any cartridge cases, so I'm guessing it's caseless and has some tiny microscopic internal bolt. It also produces its own negligent discharges <laughs> as, as a sort of meta plot point, which is I think is genius. Okay, I've just noticed that there's something reciprocating at the front of the gun. I'm, I'm trying to remain professional and focused here, despite the uh, amusement <laughs> factor. So there is, there's something cycling here. There's something chambering, locking, firing, uh, God knows how. And a load of other AI electronic gubbins. A possibly final footnote on this one is that we appear to have t uh, ambidextrous slide release controls on this, only there isn't a slide and they don't appear to do anything. I think they were probably modeled as pinch to release catches for the magazine, which is quite reminiscent of the P90 in the way that it comes in from the rear and is horizontal and presumably, f well, this feeds from the front rather than P90 mag, which feeds from the rear, but probably the inspiration for this. But yeah, those controls don't seem to do anything. The magazine secures itself and is just pulled off the gun when it's empty. But far be it from me to criticize Skippy. Right, I think I understand the autonomous aiming thing now. So the gun isn't aiming at all, it's the projectiles that are being guided. So like, like at least one of the other guns in the game, you fire them conventionally, or the gun fires itself in this case, when the mood takes it, and then the projectiles are guided to the part of the target, or in this case, the part of the target specifically, that the AI is able to target. Really fascinating concept, even if it was done, done seriously, but instead we have the sort of Borderlands level humour, uh, which I, <laughs> I cannot help laughing at. The, the fun facts especially are, uh, are really, <laughs> well, fun. <laughs> I like this one. This is reflective of the old 50s, 60s, 70s attempts to fire more than one shot from a from a military rifle at once. The idea being to create, to increase hit probability and assuming you hit them, potentially lethality as well because they'll get hit by more than one shot. Essentially the advantage of a shotgun but fired from a rifle. And the simplest way to achieve that was to put two or three bullets in the same case. Then there were multiple barrel options for it. And that appears to be what we have here. So we have, I think, three barrels. And the outer two pivot away, almost like swing wings on a fighter jet, so that when you're firing normally, you get a spread of shot. And then when you aim, those close up and the barrels, they will then converge uh, more on the same spot. It's it's all sci-fi, of course, but it makes some sense. You know, it's just not just creating the effect out of nowhere. Something is happening that is logically associated with the effect you're getting. <laughs> not every gu game gun works that way. Uh. 
<laughs> if you'd like to support what we do here at the Royal Armouries, we have a link as ever in the description for donations or membership. Um, you can, of course, come and visit one of our three sites if you're here in the UK. And we also have our own YouTube channel and various social media outlets that you can check out as well. But again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.